Hi everyone, this is Marianne and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I made a disc-bound wallet from scratch, complete with card holders and pouches for paper currency and other receipts, and a closure. The main component of the wallet is the card holders. I printed these front panels for the card holders using tracing paper. I used the Durer tracing paper. This is the same tracing paper that I used for my cash envelope system. And I do have a video about that, which I will link down below. I bought this tracing paper at a store in my city called Master Square. I made the layout for these on a software called Pages on my Mac. I made boxes with faint outlines that are sized to fit the credit cards, so that's 84 millimeters wide by 56 millimeters tall. This is a very similar process to how I made my cash envelope system and also very similar to how I laid out my individual cash pouches for my cash box for savings. A video of that will also be linked down below. And I did make it a point to have a dark gray box at the bottom of each box on the layout that can block important information on the front of the cards because the lower part is usually where the card numbers are and we're not supposed to show that to anyone. So I added that dark gray box to obscure confidential information, not only for when I'm taking videos, but also for when I am flipping through this wallet in public, like in um, checkout counters. And over the gray box, I just typed in the name of the card that it's supposed to house because I want each card to have its own special specific place so I know where to return it every time I use it. And also, in case a card goes missing, I will know what card it is. Later on, you will see just how many cards I have. So. I have a lot, it's not easy to keep track of them, especially that they have several different methods of usage. Some need to be swiped out of my sight, some need to be swiped right in front of me, some need a pin, some don't, some do not need to be swiped at all, some work only in certain machines, some need to be shown to someone else whenever I go somewhere, things like that. So having the name of the card right in front just makes things much easier for me. They're also grouped together in the final product. So anyway, here I printed out just one sheet first, just to check if I have the dimensions right. I cut them down to size using a box cutter, a metal ruler, and a cutting mat. And then the backing sheet for the card holders will be this 120 GSM paper. I'm using the Sky Tone that I purchased at another store, which is also in my city. The store is called Hong. This 120 GSM paper is cut to 95 millimeters wide and 200 millimeters tall. The exact same dimensions as my cash pouches in the cash envelope system because I will be laminating these and so I have to leave an edge at the top and at the bottom, five millimeters at the top and five millimeters at the bottom so that the dimensions of the finished card holders will be 210 millimeters tall and 95 millimeters wide, which will be the same as my cash pouches in my cash envelope system, like I said, and also the same size as my actual planner. That size is the A5 Slim, and I have been on that size and in the disc bound since July of this year, and it's working really, really well for me. I really, really like the size, so I am using this size for everything. The search for my current planner was my One Book July project for 2021, and I will link the playlist down below in case you're interested to watch my process for the search and experimentation. So anyway, once each panel made of tracing paper is cut down to size, I'm going to adhere two of the corners to the 120 GSM paper using the Zig Kuratake two-way glue. This is the same glue that I used to adhere two sheets of paper when I was making my cash pouches for my cash envelope system and also for my daily cash boxes, which I mentioned earlier. I needed to adhere them together at the corners in order to stabilize those two sheets together and uh, make them easier to laminate. And then to make sure that 
all of the panels in all of the card holders. I mean, to make sure that all of the card slots in all of the card holders will be aligned once they're stacked together, I made a sort of alignment guide. I made sure to leave five millimeters worth of paper at the top and at the bottom, and then the middle card holder will be placed at dead center. And now it's time to laminate. I'm using this quaff laminating film. By the way, this is 125 microns, which I believe is also known as 5 mil. I purchased this online via Shopee, and I will link it in the description box. The laminating machine I am using will also be linked down below. Now, because I'm going to use only a small part of the laminating pouch for now, I just cut off the portion that I needed and left the rest aside for later. And because I already adhered the corners of the tracing paper panels to the bigger panel of paper, I can easily place the whole thing in the laminating pouch without worrying that they will move around. Everything stayed in place. And now it is time to cut. The long sides will be cut off completely without leaving any lamination at the edge because we don't need the seal there. But I will leave behind 5 millimeters worth of lamination at the top and at the bottom because we need the edge there. Well, actually, technically, I do not because the card holders are already positioned, I mean, the card slots are already positioned away from the edge like the top edge and the bottom edge of the paper. So that's already sealed. But I just want to make sure that there is enough lamination at the top and at the bottom. And to hole punch, I am using this template of paper that is already hole punched using the Happy Planner punch. And I will punch holes on the laminated card holder using a single hole punch and a piece of paper. My Happy Planner punch cannot punch plastic. I tried it once and it jammed and I'm never going to do it again. I just do not need the stress, so I just do this instead. This is not a problem at all. I just take my time. And whenever I do these kinds of projects, I make sure that I am not in a hurry. I just enjoy the process because it's calming. And now let us try putting in some actual cards. Here's my loyalty card from a store in my country called Egg. A loyalty card from Otterbox, which is expired, but they told me my account is updated. It's just the card itself that's expired. And I can get my new card when I'm in Metro Manila. And then a loyalty card from Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. They all fit well, not too loose that they will fall out, and also not too snug that they will rip the lamination apart. And I do need the cards to be jutting out because that's how I take them out of the slots. I just wiggled the cards very gently inside the slots just to figure out the right amount of card that's supposed to jut out without actually falling out. I cannot push them all the way in or else they will get stuck and even if something is still sticking out, it will be very difficult to grab it and take it out. But having maybe six or seven millimeters of card jutting out, I think will work the best. And the dark gray blocks at the bottom of each card slot did not completely obscure the numbers at the bottom of the Otterbox loyalty card because the card is black and the numbers are white. And this is not a sensitive card. No one will be able to make use of this. All this card really does for me is to give me a discount whenever I buy an Otterbox product from the Otterbox kiosk in SM Mall of Asia. But with other cards that have bright colors like green and orange, the numbers are obscured by the dark gray box. So I went ahead and made the rest of the card holders using that process and put all of my cards in. And here is the finished product on the left. That is the wallet the disc bound wallet, already finished. On the right is my cash envelope system. I made this on camera and like I said, I will link the video down below. This disc bound cash envelope system will work in conjunction with this disc bound wallet. So this wallet has metal discs that are 1.5 inches in diameter. I have five rose gold discs at the bottom and three silver ones at the top. 
I did not have enough of the same color, but this is okay. These discs actually used to be on what I was planning to be my supplemental binder for my planner, but that is really not working out. So I took out the discs and used them here. And as you can see, all of the cards are aligned. The front cover of the wallet is a frosted plastic. Uh, these are made for the A5, but I just cut them down to fit my A5 slim inserts. I will share links in the description box to where I bought these frosted plastic covers as well as the metal discs. This artwork here of the pink flowers is a printout of a photo that I downloaded from Unsplash, which I will also link down below. I printed this on tracing paper and laminated it. Now, because both this wallet and the cash envelope system are the exact same size, I have transferred some of the cash pouches from the cash envelope system to the wallet. I had three different people left to mail out notebooks to, and I've already set the money aside for the mailing. So when I went out to mail notebooks to one of these people, I just accessed the cash that was inside this pouch. Here is the pouch for my maintenance medication. Right now I still have enough, no need to buy new ones, but the prescription is here anyway. When I need to purchase more medication, I will just put the money in here so it will be together with the prescription. That's the best thing about having one size of everything and using the same binding system for everything. You can transfer the pages and contents easily. And here's just another blank like blank pouch, uh, empty pouch for other loose papers that I might end up with and have to keep. And here are the cards. Here's my driver's license and here's a slot for my person with disability identification card. Right now that PWD card is inside my bag. I carry around a transparent bag and my disability card is displayed right at the front so that I can get ushered into the priority lane whenever I have to fall in line for anything. And at the bottom is a loyalty card for a bookstore. And then here are the rest of the cards. I actually have no credit cards and I have only two bank cards. One of them can only be used on the ATM machine and the other card actually cannot be used on the ATM or any other machine, but I use it for online transactions. It always has nothing in it, except for when I need to make an online transaction. And the rest are membership cards and loyalty cards. I have a lot of these because these are the stores that I usually go to for my basic needs like office supplies, toiletries. And I get points for every time I buy something and I get to redeem those points when I have enough. And I also have my HMO card here. And at the back is another pouch, and then these are the back covers. The artwork is just a mirror image of the one at the front. So I printed also on, lamin uh, on tracing paper and then laminated it. Now, of course, because this is a wallet, I need to make this secure, make sure nothing falls out. For now, I'm going to use the same travel cover that I made for my disc bound planner before. This is the same one, remember this? I cut this from a clear book cover months ago. I showed it on video and I will link that video down below. Now that planner that I made this travel cover for had discs that were 1.75 inches in diameter. They were the expander metal discs from Happy Planner. So this travel cover is sized for that thickness. As you can see, this wallet has only 1.5 inch discs. So you can clearly see the difference. Now to close this, I can no longer find the pink silicon band that I have been using with this before, but I have the lavender one that it came with. I have forgotten where I got these. These have been with me for quite a while, but you can use any elastic band for this purpose as long as it is the right size. I just slip in the flap and that is it. The next day I had to run out for two different errands very, very quickly. And so I was able to take out this wallet on a kind of field test. I found out that it was more convenient to put the laminated sheet on the outside because it was a smidge narrower. So it was easier for me to slip in the flap of the travel cover 
under it, and none of the contents of the wallet wiggled out. However, I also realized that it was quite inconvenient. That flap that I have to slot through the band was kind of cumbersome, and so I decided to make a new travel cover for it. I got this file folder from Hong. It's just a folder that has sections in it, and it has an elastic closure, but no flap. The first time I made a travel cover from something that already had an existing elastic closure, that one had a flap. I will link the video down below. But I decided that this time I did not want the flap because just in case I move up to bigger discs or move down to smaller discs, the travel cover with elastic closure without a flap can expand and contract depending on the chunkiness of the wallet. And this folder comes in two designs and I bought both of the designs actually because I wanted to make a travel cover for something else as well. These are very inexpensive. 103 Philippine pesos converts to more or less 2 US dollars. So now let us make that travel cover. First I'm going to make the back cover. To find the center, I'm aligning the center discs with the end points of the elastic as you can see and from there I made a mark and then I created a cutting line using a pencil. The height of the wallet is going to be 220 millimeters and that will be the height of this travel cover as well. And then I decided to just cut off that entire panel from the rest of the folder so that I can be free to measure without the bumps. I also cut off the panel for what would be the front of the travel cover. I used that center button and aligned it with the center of the discs to find out the center <laughs> and so that I will know where to place my first mark. And from that first mark, it's easy to make the rest of the marks because the front and the back travel cover will have the same measurements. Now when I realized that the gold foil design of this one will be cut off, I put it aside and decided to use the other one with a diamond design because I kind of like it. I like the gold foiling. It is a yellow gold. It doesn't really match the rose gold discs completely, but it's a nice detail anyway. So I did the same. I used the center button and aligned it with the center of the discs and made the first mark and then drew the rest of the cutting guides. And I am so glad that when the panel was cut down, the diamond design was really in the center, as you can see. And then I just cut down the part that will go in the back. The width of the travel cover will also be the same as the width of the wallet, which is 117 millimeters. I made the mark and I made the cut. And then I just erased all of the pencil marks and pencil lines. And then I decided to snip off a teeny tiny bit of the corners off, just so it won't poke me. I don't really like rounded corners, although I do have a corner rounder and I'm sure you have seen it in my videos before, but sharp corners are kind of my jam. And now it's time to hole punch again. I used the exact same technique, paper template, binder clips, single hole punch, scissors. And then I just put it into place on the discs. Here is the front panel. I'm just making sure that the button will be at the right place. It should not make the elastic too loose, that it will be useless as a closure, and it should also not be too tight either, that it will not be able to expand just in case I move to bigger discs. And then same method, measure, cut, hole punch, then we are all done. This is the finished wallet. I really like it. And it can even work as a satellite binder, something to bring around on the go when I do not need my entire planner. I can just transfer the relevant pages to this wallet and then just bring the wallet and leave the planner at home. There is no pen here yet in this wallet, but I'll see what I can come up with in the next couple of weeks. I really, really like this a lot. I like this a whole lot. For a video about my previous wallet, which was a Filofax Penny Bridge, as well as a video about my previous satellite binder, links will be in the description box. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please leave a thumbs up and a comment, and please subscribe to my channel. 
What do you use as a wallet that works with your other planning systems? Please let me know in the comments and let's talk. Thanks for watching. Bye.